What's up, everyone? In this episode of Motive Garage, we get our Mark V Supra onto the dyno and start tuning. Now our Mark V Supra has had a cosmetic makeover so we can personalise it and it's instantly identifiable as the Modi Supra. But really what we want to do on our channel with this car is start the development process of making some power and seeing how well we can use it at the track. Now rather than just throw on some combo that we've heard works in the US, we are going to do our own development alongside the guys at Croydon Racing Developments so that we can show you exactly what you need to do to your Supra at certain points to achieve a certain power or performance figure target. Now obviously the first thing we need to do is get our baseline power level and we're going to be putting it onto the mainline dyno hub dyno. Now that we could use a chassis dyno at this power level but we want to go onto the hub dyno so that it is a perfectly repeatable dyno test. Now the Croydon Racing Development's dyno room as you can see is sealed, it's ducted, has ventilation, really massive fans for good airflow so we are able to control the tests every single time. So. Con's going to get this thing warmed up and let's see what it puts down dead stock. Well, we've done three runs back to back and the heat soak wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be on the Supra. Our third run was 311 horsepower at the hubs. Now, if you want to work that out to what it would be at the tyres, eh, probably lose about another 30 horsepower to get a figure for at the tyres. Uh, how does that compare to other dinos around the world? Well doesn't really matter, does it? The dyno is the tuning tool. As long as we're using the same dyno for our before and after, that's all that matters. So the first thing we're gonna try it on this car is the k &N panel filter test. Let's get it in the car, run it up again, and see what it can do. So we let the car cool down for a little bit before we then did three back-to-back -back runs with the K&N filter and on the third run, which is the right one to compare, we had a peak power increase of three horsepower giving us 314 uh, and we saw as much as five horsepower in a couple of parts of the dyno run. Uh, is it worth doing to your car? Well, if you're just doing the filter, eh, maybe not. But if you, you insist you want to do something cheap and easy to yourself to the car, hey, why not? put it in. But what we do know is having that extra flow is going to help us once we start to tune the car and push more power, which is what we're about to do right now. Now there is heaps of off the shelf tunes you can get for a Mark V Supra and they do work. We've seen plenty of good results online. Uh, here at CID though and myself, we prefer not to get off the shelf tunes just purely because different circumstances, different countries, different fuels, different altitudes, etc. We like to actually tune the car to suit where we live and the fuel that we have. Uh, and also just to make sure the car is safe. You also find that some of the off-the-shelf tunes can be a little bit conservative, which they need to be because they've obviously got to suit plenty of different locations. And if you've watched our R32 GTR build, you know that, well, I don't like being conservative. I like to make as much power as I possibly can. We're going to leave the car with Con for a week so he can learn the Supra, have a good play around, learn what he needs to learn with the car before we can start pushing some extra power. I don't know about you, but I'm actually pretty excited to see how much more power you can make with this car from just a flash tune.
customers think we mainly focus on GDRs and that's it, but really we do a bit of Euros and a bit of Aussie Muscle, a bit of everything as well really. We've been doing Euros for probably over 10 years. The Japanese JDM customers, I guess you'd like to call them, they go from you know, mild mods all the way up to you know, eight, seven, six second cars. Whereas the Euro stuff seems to tend towards, I guess, more basic mods, intakes, exhaust, that sort of stuff. You can definitely have a lot more comfort and still be quick. They're much more refined vehicle. This first Supra actually on the dyno. I've actually got a couple of people waiting, um, but obviously we use yours as a guinea pig. We recently moved over to Ecutech. One, the 2020 GDRs are only done with Ecutech as well. So we had to make that investment to do that as well. And in the process, we also got the licensing for the Supra and some of the Audi stuff and you know, V-Dub as well. Because a big learning curve in it. It obviously requires a lot of time put into it to get the most out of it, like anything. But in general, there's a lot you can do with the Ecutech. I mean, you can run nitrous control through it. You can, you can have a whole heap of custom maps. So it really comes down to how far you want to you know, push it to use the software. I mean, they've spent millions of dollars in development on the factory ECU. So that they're capable, yeah, they are. It's just a matter of what do we have to do to get around the limits they've put in place in the factory system. 90% of the stuff on the newer cars is torque management and airflow and that sort of stuff as well. So there's a lot of intricate things inside the map which you need to sort of get around to make the car work. Making it work on the dyno is one thing, but then making it work on the road, it can be a totally different thing as well. I was actually pretty surprised. I wasn't expecting those results, especially so quick, so easy. So considering the mods that's done to it, it's actually pretty impressive. It's been probably two or three days going through the software and going through the maps and I guess adjusting what I thought needed to be adjusted. And yeah, it might've been the first two or three runs, but there was a lot of back work to get to those two or three runs. For something like yours, I've probably put already, I mean, I've counted the hours, but it'll be upwards of 20 hours, 20, 30 hours. I'd like to see it the quickest in the country at least, and you know, keep pushing. It comes down to how far you want to push it as well. So yeah, we want to use yours as our development vehicle, I guess. So really, as, as far as we can go with it. Now, just like Con, I've seen plenty of results of tuned Supras all over the world, but I'm still blown away by how much extra horsepower it was able to make, and also just how easily it was able to make it. Uh, based on what I'd watched around the world, I was expecting sort of a 70 horsepower increase as a minimum. Uh, some people had claimed higher. I was gonna be happy around there, but the fact that we made 90 horsepower extra over standard is pretty damn impressive. Uh, in fact, we saw more than that in our peak. So we just did 406, 405, 404, three runs back to back. Uh, the other day when it was a little bit warmer, Con did 403, uh, 401 and 399 horsepower. So it's making anywhere from 399 to 406 horsepower, depending on how much heat soak and the temperature inside the dyno room at the time. It's a pretty cold day today, so you can tell, it makes that a little bit more. But it's not just the peak power that we're looking at when it comes to this car. What we decided to do pretty early was not try and go too aggressive with extra power down low. Uh, the problem with this car is it's so responsive and so torquey, if we try and put too much power below three and a half thousand rpm it'll just bake the tires it won't go anywhere so we actually didn't go as aggressive as we could on trying to increase torque and power down low we concentrated on trying to get more power in the last 2000 rpm which is where you're going to be once you get moving and you're pulling gears going down the quarter mile what's super impressive is peak torque uh, is up 125 foot pound but higher in the rpm range that last sort of couple of thousand rpm we saw as much as 150 foot pounds of extra torque up top which is where we're trying to find that extra power. So when you look at the graph, you can see that last couple of thousand RPM is where the big gains are. It's a massive amount of extra power and torque everywhere. Uh, and then even more so in that last couple of thousand RPM. So we did that just to help manage the way the car drives, because the last thing you wanna do is put your foot down at two and a half thousand RPM, blow the tires off, end up into the gutter, uh, rather than trying to get some actual extra speed on the thing. Now, Con did say that the car could potentially make more power than what it is now if we really wanted to squeeze it. But we've decided to leave it where it is with that extra 90 horsepower, uh, just based on results we've seen elsewhere and the fact that it's just doing it really easily. We haven't had to lean the car out really too much at all to make that grunt. Uh, we don't know how much back pressure is in the factory exhaust, so we're not gonna try and make any more power until we've done the aftermarket downpipe, which of course we've already got from Golby's Parts in Queensland. So uh, the next step after we go and drive it and test it the way it is and get it down the quarter mile once the track opens is to obviously then go downpipe tune it again uh, and then we've got a few more small mods to try and harness the most out of the standard turbo from there on so for now though 
Let's go take it for a drive and see what that power does in the real world. Well, the best thing about driving the Supra right now with just a flash tune means it drives like a standard car when you drive it normally, which is, for a lot of customers of these things, is exactly what they want. They don't want it to be louder or more uncomfortable or jerky or doing anything wrong. Uh, and first impression of driving it since the flash tune is it hasn't affected the way the car drives normally at all. So all of the differences really are, well, when you put your foot down. So even just giving it a little bit of a roll on, and a bit of extra grunt, you can feel it straight away, which is, you know, good. But at the same time, you still want that throttle control that you had previously. All right, let's put this bad boy into sport, manual mode, and see how much this extra power actually you can feel on the road. certainly got plenty of extra grunt I'm even finding now that the gear shift has actually been slowed down from second to third as a bit of torque reduction that's better whoa well I will say this the extra 90 horsepower is definitely there um, the car used to have good mid-range torque and come on real nicely. Now it's got some top-end charge. So what you can see on the dyno is definitely happening in real life. Like I said, I just saw the thing um, actually use some torque reduction on a gear change then before, which is the first time I've seen it. Traction control warning light comes on pretty easily in second gear now, before it used to only come on in first. So it's pretty good, it's, it's fast. And the best thing about it is, back into auto mode, back into a uh, normal driving mode and now you have a nice luxury car again so sydney dragway hasn't actually opened back up yet so we can't take the super to the track to give you guys a quarter mile time with the extra power uh at least not in this video anyway but it's the first thing we're going to do as soon as the track opens with the car and its current setup before we do any further development we want to make sure that you guys get to find out exactly how fast it is down the quarter mile at each spec now, a lot of people are probably going to say, what about a draggy? Well, let's face it, doing quarter mile and 100 to 200 times on a draggy on the street, illegal, going to get me in trouble. So we're going to wait till we're at the drag strip. We'll also have the draggy on so we can do 0 to 100 k's an hour, 100 to 200 k's an hour, as well as quarter mile and really test out the car. <laughs> 